Welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, I am going to show you how to machine applique uh, a Dresden plate block down on its background and how to create the center for it. Uh, I showed you how to make this Dresden plate block in our kaleidoscope video, which I will link below, but I thought I would show you how you go from the finished sewn block to get it applique on the background. And I'm going to show you on my new Bernina 570 how it goes. I've only had the machine a couple weeks, so I kind of want to go through that as well while we do this. So first step is to figure out where you want the Dresden plate on your background. You need to fold the background in both directions to mark the center lines. And then you need to decide, do you want your Dresden plate to go up and down like this? Or do you want it to go at an angle so it looks more like a flower? For me today, that's what I'm going to be doing. You can pin or glue the flower to the background. I like to glue it so I don't have to fight with pins. And I'm using a bow and glue stick. And I'm just going to fold this in half. And I'm going to put a strip of glue down the middle of each petal. And push it back and make sure it's aligned. And I'm going to push that down. And give the glue a second to adhere. And then I'm going to flip it over again and do the same thing on the other petals. You'll notice I'm not going right up to the edges. I'm just going in the center of each petal. And that's just so that I don't have to fight with glue on the edges. And I have pressed this seam open. So when I go to glue it down, I want to make sure it stays open, even though we're folding it back and forth, because that will just give us a wrinkle in our flower, which we don't want. All right, so there is the flower. It is positioned correctly. We're checking that. Now we need to figure out our center. Uh, the kaleidoscope ruler I used did not come, is meant for kaleidoscopes. It is also a Dresden plate ruler. Here it is. But it doesn't give you a template for your center of your circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these little drafting templates. These are super, super fun. If you don't own one of these because you didn't have to take drafting like I did, um, you can get them on Amazon. They're in the drafting and school supplies section and they come circles this tiny all the way up to like really big circles. I have a whole bunch of these, but I just pulled out the one that will work for my flower. And now you can see what I can do. I can decide, do I want a little center on it? Do I want a big center on it? Do I want something more like this? So I can kind of decide without cutting anything, which size I like. So in this case, I'm going to use, I'm going to finish it at one, oh, let's see here. What I'm looking at is I think I'm gonna do a seven eighths inch center on here because then I can use the one and three eighths flat, uh, circle with your quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just taking the side I want, size I want, adding a half an inch, and that's the size I'm going to trace. So I guess it doesn't really matter which one. I could go with go with this, and this is actually what I'm going to end up as a finished center. That is if you're going to do a finished edge center. If you're going to do raw edge, you can just trace this on diffusible web, trace it, iron it onto your fabric, iron it down, and finish your edges. It's totally up to you. That is the route I usually would go is a fusible web center because it's quick and easy and very, very simple. But today I think I'm going to show you how you can do a circle with a finished edge because the whole Dresden plate has a finished edge. So I think it'd be nice if they were both finished. So what I'm gonna do is take two layers of fabric, take my circle template, and it doesn't have to be a fabric pen because this is our cut line, not our sewing line. So I picked up a nice, easy Sharpie that will show up very nicely. There is my perfect circle. Then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut this out as a square and then cut it out on the drawn line. And I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the circle. You do not need to leave an opening for turning. I'm going to show you that trick here in just a second. The same method works with interfacing. If you want something thinner, you could do fabric and interfacing versus two pieces of fabric. But this is just an example, so I'm using two pieces of fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that and I'll be right back. All right, so there is my circle. I am going to um, cut the seam allowance, seam allowance an eighth of an inch. 
And I'm in the end may not go this route because you know what, to be honest, I'm just not getting a nice perfect circle sewing it. But let's see what it looks like before we pitch the idea and go with a fusible. So now you have two layers of fabric sewn all the way around. And what you do is very, very carefully, and the bigger the circle is, the easier it is to do this, you pull the two pieces away from each other. It's also easier if you don't have fake nails, which are long nails, I should say. <laughs> this is fun. There we go. So now we've separated the two halves. And I'm going to take my scissors in one side and cut a slit so that I can get the edge of my scissor into that side and just snip a slit. Then I'm going to take the slot and I'm going to turn the circle right side out through the slot. Now I will be honest, um, I usually do this with much bigger circles and I have a feeling that this is going to be the same case. So let's get this turned. It'd be easier to turn and everything, but um, I want to go through and show you how this works. <laughs> and this doodles is poking me while I'm doing this, making it that much harder. So then we're going to use the edge of a purple thing and turn this all the way around. As you can see, I just kind of work my purple thing all the way around and there is my center, but that doesn't look very circular. So, so I think I may end up doing the fusible web method just because it'll be neater, but if you'd like an organic circle, that one would work. Here we are, we're over here at the machine. We're ready to start doing our blind hem stitch. I wanted to show you the stitch I'm using. It's this stitch right here. Uh, it looks like a straight and then a bite, a straight and a bite. This is the stitch I use for our machine binding. And I changed the stitch width to 1.8 and the stitch length to 1.8. I make sure the needle is in the center position and if you have the feature of needle down on your machine go ahead and put that on. That's going to make the machine applique super easy. And again these settings and this stitch are exactly what I use to do our bindings and I use invisible in the bobbin and invisible on top. I'm using Aurafil invisible. It's one of the best out there and I really love using it. I will put a link below for it. Um, not all uh, monofilament or nylon threads are equal, and this is the one I find I have the least trouble with, so I really enjoy it. Um, again, I have an open toe foot on my machine, and I've glued my flower down to the background. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera to the stitching position so you can see that, and we'll get started. So we are ready to start stitching our flower down and if you have a center line on your machine you're going to want to have the center line going on the edge of the fabric and we're going to start over here because the bite is going to go to the right not the left and we're going to start in a nice straight area. I don't want to start on uh, in a pivoted point or on a point because it's going to be harder to align my stitch. I'd rather warm up to it if that makes any sense. So then we're going to go ahead and start our stitch and um, I usually will crank down the first stitch to make sure that it is going to bite my fabric in this case. So we're going to go ahead and start there and then we're going to do the first stitch and the machine will do a knot on my machine. So there we go. It's the straight is going into the background and the bite is going into the edge of my flower and you want to go slow. When you get to the end, you're going to want to pivot, do one stitch at the end, pivot and then go continue down the straight. And this will give you a nice invisible stitch that you won't see and you can even make your applique stitch smaller. Um, this has taken a pretty decent bite and maybe go down to 1.5 if you don't want it to bite in this far. And you want to just make sure that it's staying aligned with your fabric edge. Again, pivot, do. In that case, it didn't want to hit the edge, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
Now I'm brand new to this machine. I've only had it a couple of weeks. So if it looks like I don't know how to drive, it's because I'm just not that comfortable with it yet because I haven't done a lot of this. This is the first machine applique I'm doing on the 570. It's a wonderful machine, but just like anything else, if you're not used to it, you know the quirks of your own machine. So I'm still learning like where things align and how to make sure it hits the edge and you know when is it going to not. And I also am coming off of a 20 year old machine that did not have all these automated features. Okay, so again, I'm going to pivot at the point, I've caught the point. And if you don't catch the point, don't try to go back and catch it. Just keep going. And at the end, if you need to do a little hand stitch there to do it, it's going to look much neater than if you try to, you know, make the machine hit the spot you want it to spot hit. All right, there we go. And there's our circle. And again, that doesn't look all that great because the circle itself isn't very circular, but I do want you to get the idea of how to machine applique on there. And that's where I started backwards so I can go in there and rip that out. But if I just put my thumb over it, you can see what it looks like. There we go. Same here. You can see much better here. It's much, much neater. That's what it's supposed to look like. Just ignore my center. <laughs> And that's it. That's how to machine applique on your Bernina 570. Uh, try to do it without a camera in front of you and try to make your circle in the center straighter. Um, what I think I might do is pop that circle out and just go ahead and put a fusible circle in there and finish the edge of that just so it looks prettier. Um, but I did want you to see how you could do a circle that way. Uh, and obviously if the circle is bigger, it will come out much, much neater than mine. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to machine applique, uh, especially using the Bernina 570. I've really enjoyed having this. I'm just, like I said, just learning how to use this machine. Um, but this machine applique technique I've been doing for a long, long time, and it's a nice way to do finished edge applique without having to hand sew it. So if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching.